Hi guys, my name is Nikita and I'm part of the BankX project. So today I'm going to talk about the main idea of our proof of asset protocol, the role of BankX Foundation, the issues linked to proving who finally owns the token product, and uh, our vision how to overcome uh, these problems. So uh, here we have a snapshot of our Lucy chart uh, showing the different processes of our proof of asset protocol. So to keep it simple, I'll use the example of a car uh, owned by a, a person uh, who wants to tokenize it and then exchange it against some uh, other goods. So the proof of asset protocol takes as input some initial information that you can see on the left part. So we need the information about the originator client. Uh, say it could be a person or a company, here it's the car owner. Uh, then this information goes to uh, the BankX originator scroll. So we check if, uh, say, the person was involved in some scams or uh, the person has a good reputation. Then we check for the availability. Uh, we need to know if the car is parked somewhere, if it's moving. Uh, so we need all this information to take into account. Then we look at the global delivery conditions, the logistic conditions, juridical conditions, taxes, uh, in the case of a car, some um, uh, new cars need uh, to pay more taxes uh, when you import them. Uh, our our uh, older cars are cheaper to import, uh, or it could be uh, the exact opposite for some countries. Uh, some countries, uh, for example, give you bonuses when you buy a Tesla. So all this information is to be encrypted in the smart contract. Uh, then we have uh, the accounting process. So uh, we'll use Balance 3 uh, software developed by Consensus uh, in order to check that uh, all the taxes on the token are paid, that uh, all the legal stuff uh, is uh, being verified and uh, it works well. So uh, once we get all this information, we input it in a product formula one. Uh, this is our first product tokenization step. So uh, the product uh, tokenization formula outputs a uh, product, to uh, product token. Um, in this case, it's an Ethereum token that uses Ethereum gas. Then this classic Ethereum token is inputted in formula two in order to transform it in a smart asset. During the, this transformation, uh, BankX provides some contract expertise and uh, some escrow services. And for all these uh, operations and services, BankX charges BankX gas. Then uh, after the tokenization was successful, we get a smart asset, also called for us a product token, that has different characteristics in it. Uh, say for a car, we need the weight, the size, the color, and all, all this stuff. Uh, then this product token is sent on the BankX market, uh, where it goes through different product filters uh, why that? Because say you want to buy a gold watch on the BankX market, so you're not really interested in uh, seeing cars or P2P loans proposed to you, as well as uh, P2P loans will need a special interface because uh, they have different parameters of interest than uh, cars or motorbikes. So uh, this way uh, we have uh, our product token on the BankX market, uh, following some trading rules according to Formula 3. And then Formula 4 matches uh, the different asks that come from uh, potential buyers. Uh, and uh, we get, for example, uh, a match between uh, the bid and the ask. And uh, finally, uh, it's a deal. So uh, at this step, we need to make sure that the car token uh, is delivered to uh, the owner and that all the conditions uh, are respect. So for this, uh, we've thought about making a proof of uh, mining uh, and uh, it will ensure that uh, indeed the, uh, there will be no legal or no uh, security issues uh, with delivering the product token. So finally, uh, the product token is deposited in the buyer's wallet and the uh, originator client gets uh, BKX tokens as a reward. Uh, so, um, 
Now we're going to talk about the Bankex Foundation and its important role uh, in the Bankex ecosystem. So, uh, Bankex Foundation has a community of uh, developers, coders that develop new smart contracts. Why that? Imagine you have an owner of a skyscraper in London coming to you and asking if he can tokenize office spaces. So, you would be uh, interested to provide these services. But uh, BankHex doesn't have a smart contract for it. So we'll ask our community to uh, code one. If they're interested and see a potential in tokenizing office spaces, they'll do it and in reward receive some BankHex tokens. Uh, so after uh, this, kind of this new smart contract is created by the community, we can then start tokenizing uh, offices not only in London, all over the world because it will be a universal smart contract that will adjust to original specifics. Uh, so here again, we unlock a new potential for uh, owners of assets and make uh, the securization uh, process fast and, and efficient. Uh, plus we allow uh, easy access, uh, fast and easy access actually to the capital market. So to conclude, uh, we can say that uh, blockchain technologies are becoming uh, more popular and more intuitive uh, as time goes by. And we think that smart assets will help us to use the advantages of blockchain technologies in a more efficient and financially attractive way for us. So now I'm gonna show you a tutorial on how to create a card token uh, using the user interface we created. So uh, here you can see uh, the different bars uh, specialized for different parts of information about a car. The VIN, the model, the brand, the year, and the color. So now we're going to input uh, the VIN information about the car. Uh, for example, uh, let, let it be a CV89R78. Uh, uh, let's choose now a model, uh, A4. Um, the brand Audi, the year 2006, and the color red. So now uh, we have input information and we we'll click on create. Uh, now uh, the software is creating a smart contract. Uh, here we use the MetaMask plugin uh, that is supported by the Chrome browser. So here uh, uh, we're in the testnet mode uh, to test our uh, card token smart contract. So here we can do reject, submit, uh, or uh, reset. Uh, so to make the contract enter the system, uh, the blockchain, we're gonna click on submit. So now uh, the contract is being mined by uh, Ethereum miners, and we're waiting it for it to appear on the Ether scan. So here's the transaction number. Uh, we can copy and paste it into Etherscan to uh, get information about uh, uh, the transaction itself, if it's been mined or it's been completed. So yeah, we have to wait a while uh, for um, the contract to be mined into the blockchain. So as we can see, it's pending. Um, well, usually it will take uh, a while for it to get mined. Uh, so here now, uh, the transaction is completed. We copy uh, the transaction, the Ethereum transaction code. Um, and we put it in blockchain, and now we can see that the transaction was accomplished uh, with the green check mark. Uh, the cost of the transaction, uh, 31 uh, GUI. And um, now we can use the MetaMask plugin 
uh, to uh, input uh, uh, some code. So we're basically basing the code into our MetaMask plugin. Um, and we see that uh, all the information we entered uh, into the blockchain, the make, the brand, uh, the, the VIN, uh, are all stored in the blockchain. So here's the code that we use to um, that creates the smart contract itself. Well, uh, this code allows you to tokenize your car and to input it in the blockchain and then uh, get uh, some finance, some PBKX tokens. Uh, well, gets, gets you uh, the access to the capital market. Uh, yeah, thanks to this uh, little piece of code. Uh, you can now uh, securize your assets, uh, trade them, exchange them against money and other stuff.